Very uh, thank you, uh, Sarans. And uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, David Natali. I am actually first time uh, uh, coming to this meetup, and uh, um, I really feel like fish on water because <laughs> uh, I'm actually an accidental uh, developer. Uh, before this, uh, I was working as a research assistant in uh, National Institute of Education. Uh, we develop custom software. Um, my background is actually in uh, statistics and marketing. And um, uh, in, the, in my previous job, uh, there was uh, uh, a need for uh, my um, principal investigator to develop some software, and so I transitioned into that and uh, fell in love with Node and uh, Arduino before that. And uh, I also like to play single board computers. Uh, but um, uh, about three, three and a half years ago, um, I had a baby, and so uh, I don't really have that much time um, outside work uh, to, you know, to, to socialize and meet people. And uh, but now it's uh, almost full now, and it's much, much um, easier to take care. I mean, um, my uh, we just give him bark me and he'll be the sweetest little boy for, for like an hour. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Now, 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 I can come out and meet people, and uh, I, I really look forward to uh, be more involved and stuff. So yeah. Uh, uh, before we begin, sorry. Until number two comes along. Until number two comes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So before we begin, um, everybody uh, familiar with Node, I guess, and uh, familiar with Arduino, I guess. Um, who uh, um, um, okay so for Arduino um, um, the way uh, Arduino just uh, as far as combining Arduino with Node is just uh, serial uh, doing over serial and there's a uh, Node module uh, uh, no serial port um, who has ever tried no serial port here just so that I can reach. Um, not really. Um, well, actually, um, probably uh, it's a bad idea to ask you <laughs> raise your hands because um, um, my eyesight is really not that good. So, <laughs> anyway. so yeah. Um, so what I have here is uh, a, a little project that I um, uh, do on my own. Um, just a, 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 just to keep myself um, sharp um, when looking for jobs. And um, what I have is a, a webcam and, and a temperature, humidity uh, sensor and hooked up to Arduino Uno and then um, connected to Node. And the project is a uh, long view and, and hang on, let me just pull up the Okay, so it's, uh, that's the diagram. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, at the left, you have your Arduino. Uh, that's the sensor unit. Um, basically, uh, it, um, it's just uh, a, a, a normal Arduino, and uh, just like uh, how you would, uh, you, you just make it just like how you would do uh, an Arduino project, just as long as it outputs serial and listens to serial. And uh, I have a, a Node.js app uh, running on a Linux computer. Uh, this can be on a laptop, or it can be on a Raspberry Pi, or PC Duino. And that's the uh, remote unit. And they talk over serial using no serial port. And uh, the remote unit uh, goes to the server. And uh, the server is uh, another Node.js app. Uh, with uh, Express and uh, the communication between uh, the server and the uh, remote unit is via socket I/O. 
So um, there is a real-time um, communication there. And also, uh, of course, you can log in to the server with a uh, uh, web browser. And communication is also done over socket I.O. over there. So, yeah, so... Um, let's just uh, try it out. Okay, so uh, I just connected the unit to uh, the server over my uh, Wi-Fi. And I've already loaded the server to on my uh, digital ocean droplet. And after login, can see the uh, temperature data and we can start and stop and uh, get camera image. So that is a uh, uh, system images. Clicking on pens, we just change the camera. Uh, and left and right. But there is a limit that the camera can uh, turn. Um, and uh, that actually uh, is from the Arduino. So uh, the the general, uh, so it went from the browser to the server over socket and the server goes to the remote unit of the SM over socket and then um, over there uh, the uh, remote unit of the SM checks for uh, oh sorry for the for the panning um, it goes to the Arduino and then the Arduino will say hey sorry this is uh, uh, the the end of the range already and then. The Node.js uh, remote unit app sends a socket I.O. Uh, message back to the browser. And so uh, I thought it would be good to have some um, basic um, Some basic uh, control just in case the user, you know, click pan, 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 What's the resolution of the, the camera image that you are sending and uh, what's the frames per second? Oh, uh, the resolution, I don't know, this is just a, a very low cost camera. I guess it's a uh, 640 480 Yeah. And uh, uh, we can definitely expand with more sensors also. Humidity is not there, so we can you know add on more. Uh, there's nothing special with the Arduino um, software. It just listens for commands over serial. So if the node uh, JS remote app in remote unit sends uh, one, then that means pan the camera lag. If it's zero, then pan the camera right. And uh, if it's two, then uh, just spits out the sensor data, and that's it. And uh, the code is on. I think I put a link on the top uh, page, but just in case, uh, you can go to github.com slash 
slash Kurakura Day slash Longview. And uh, I don't know what would come out of this. I mean, it's just a personal project right now, but if anybody is interested to you know, make this into a, a more elaborate uh, project, uh, I'd be more than happy to collaborate. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, I got a friend that is building a submarine using Oculus Rift Control. Oh, so wow. Maybe I can hook you out with him. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so far, any questions? I mean, you guys have been quiet, so uh, I kind of don't know what to do. the size of image to pass to the server? Sorry? So you're passing some image from the client to the server, right? Yes, so correct. The size of each image? Uh, it's a 640 by 480. Size, I mean, when you, when you save the physically into the disk somewhere, right? If you're not saving any physical images. Uh, what do you mean physical images? I mean, you are. We're just taking from the camera the images and passing uh -huh. to the server, right? Uh -huh. So, are you storing those images? Or? Oh, okay, yeah. The uh, the uh, Node.js app, the remote unit app, actually uh, saves the image there yeah. and then uploads it. Uh, it's just a normal upload uh, over SDB post. Uh, so, se security-wise, it's actually not that good because <laughs> you can actually go to the URL uh, slash, uh, if you know the region name. Sorry? I can see all the images if I go to the URL. Yes, correct, yes. So my question was, if at all we save the f image, right, what is the size of each image? I mean, physical KBs, how many KBs each? Um, not too sure. I, I never checked, but I guess it's not that big. Uh, probably below 100. Yeah. Uh, David. Yeah. In your architecture, um, you have Node.js running on the remote unit. Uh -huh. uh, maybe I don't know enough about Node.js, but um, what, what function does that perform on the remote unit? Why do you need a server-to-server type of communication? What, uh, what, what does your architecture do? Oh, OK. Yeah, good question. Because, uh, uh, hang on, let me just show you. So, uh, you can definitely replace the remote unit with uh, something else other than uh, a node, um, just as long as it does socket. Um, but it's just I don't know other, <laughs> other languages that can do that. But uh, um, the reason is because uh, uh, the server needs to talk to a, a computer that can uh, communicate with the Arduino. And uh, uh, the way this is, that this is set up is uh, using um, no serial port. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Um, between the remote unit and server, what what's happening? Is it uh, how is that going to get? You, uh, no JS serial is happening between sensor unit and remote unit. Between remote unit to server, what what uh, like how is it communicating? Okay, so it's just socket I/O. So the uh, remote unit is just uh, listen and send socket and it's socket. And um, uh, whenever the user click uh, a button, then uh, the server will emit. Uh, something like pen lab, and then the remote unit will have something like listener, like on pen lab, go to the top to the Arduino, and then get the Arduino to turn back and right. Um, there's actually a, a, a digest cycle on the uh, remote unit there, because uh, um, communication is done over serial, and uh, we are communicating two, two th three things basically. So, uh, pen the camera, and uh, Pen camera right right and uh, the getting the sensor data. So uh, there's these three things going in and out, and um, we we can uh, actually uh, um, ensure that they won't clash unless we code some kind of uh, uh, intermediary or uh, 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 in between uh, guy. Uh, so the way this is done is uh, I have a. A uh, function that runs uh, every, I think every 500 milliseconds, and um, as there's a new request, or there's a new socket uh, request like pen camera lab, uh, uh, that will add on the we push to an array of messages going through the Arduino, and every 500 milliseconds, 
uh, one by one, these messages is uh, uh, executed, and once it's executed, it's empty. So uh, I, I won't have any um, opportunity or any uh, possibility of crashing um, uh, data in and out. Uh, so, Arduino over Wi Fi? Yes, uh, in the electric hardware, uh, you can do it hardware wise. So, there's a chip that you can add on to the Arduino. And, uh, I think they, they call it Wi Fi Shield or something. Um, and then, but I'm not familiar with that. Or um, maybe use something like Arduino Yun, but the Yun is, uh, uh, it has uh, its own Linux. Uh, uh, small Linux uh, computer side by side already, so and you can put node on the unit as well. It's just that I haven't tried that. So there are definitely alternatives. Uh, from the time that the sensor unit receives information, uh, uh, actually I assume that the uh, node server is set up in the remote unit, right? So is there a node in a remote unit? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So from the time that the sensor unit receives information to the time that the remote unit um, in which Node.js is ready to send out uh, the packet of data, it, do, have, you ever, have you ever tried to see what's the latency between, latency of time between that? Um, below, below one second? One, so. one second is 1,000 milliseconds. Yeah, 1,000 milliseconds. And that's over, uh, over my head <laughs> And, uh, and no, I'm not talking about the fact that you need to go to the server and then from the server it needs to go to your phone. Uh -huh. I'm just looking at the raw latency between the time that it receives the, the data to the time that it's ready to send out. So do you, do you check to see how much latency is there in that? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I did check that. Um, uh, in fact, I don't know what tool I can use to check that. <laughs> But uh, I don't see any. Um, okay, so any are very close to the remote unit. Uh -huh. Do you listen to the packet and see what, what time, time time difference between two uh, instances? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's uh, it feels pretty. Uh, I mean, I mean, feeling is just a feeling. <laughs> no, just just asking to see how much how how well it performs. Okay. So, so uh -huh. That's fine. Uh -huh. So, Kelvin, I think when you talk about the time that the Node.js program takes, uh, it's less than a millisecond. Less than a millisecond? Yes. I, from the time I mean, Just on my MacBook, I run an application, okay. and the problem is I can't push more data to it, okay. right? <laughs> um, so it's not, it, it still has lapses where it's just idle in there. Okay. And I fire a couple thousand per second at it, API calls per second on a MacBook. So it goes through socket IO and Node pretty fast. So, I mean, Unless you do some very complicated calculations in there, which you shouldn't do on Node.js, this is amazing fast. Yes. Okay. All right. You can't measure it because it's, it's usually less than a millisecond. Right. I mean, on this one, there is not much happening. Right. As you said, you can only do. Uh, you, you, even if you if you keep your finger pressed on it, right, you will actually block it. Right. In yes. Yes. <laughs> and then there is the physical limit in how much the camera can actually move left and right. right? Yes, that's right. So, so what I was thinking, if, if I see uh, if Node.js is there to receive as many API calls as possible, right? That, that's what it's been mm -hmm. set up. And then you have one sensor. So is there a possibility actually to deploy that and have hundreds and thousands of sensors that you manage and you just, like the Internet of Things, you just take it and you are calculating something with it and you, you use it in that aggregated kind of view? Yeah, that would be an interesting project to try, I guess. Yeah. But that would be possible. So you could have, let's say, uh, a couple hundred sensors all over Singapore, mm -hmm. which there is existing, like for example, for traffic and, and other things, right? And you could just collect that data into your into your server that you have there, mm -hmm. right? communicating with all the all the different uh, remote units, remote units and sensors. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Probably, like I said, this is less than a millisecond, it still doesn't bog your system down, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're talking about that they are constantly firing it, which doesn't make much sense with the temperature being more or less constant, right? So yeah. you can run a lot of sensors with, with this setup that you have. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. The uh, the the actually the uh, the air pressure and temperature. Um, I don't I don't even implement any kind of filtering or data smoothing algorithm on the Arduino. So whatever we see is uh, whatever the Arduino detects. So you get all the fluctuations. <laughs> And uh, uh, it, the digest cycle actually blocks it. I mean, not blocks it, but um, it, it, it only works uh, once every 500 milliseconds. So uh, the messages coming from Arduino to the remote unit is actually more than that. I mean, several times uh, before that 500 milliseconds uh, uh, is due. So it is something like, uh, like for example, I'm uh, I'm running, I'm, I'm, I'm a uh, customer service and uh, there's a customer keep calling me. Hey, uh, David, I want uh, to order uh, uh, maybe a chocolate donut. Then I say, oh, the chocolate donut. Then I ask uh, a message to my uh, delivery guy. Hey, this customer wants chocolate donut. Then the customer say, hey, David, I want a uh, strawberry donut this time. Then I call my delivery guy. Hey, he wants strawberry donuts now. But my delivery guy say, hey, whatever you customer wants, I will go tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> Uh, so it, I'm actually updating my delivery guy a few times before he actually goes out the next morning. And uh, that is in the uh, digest uh, uh, function there. And uh, you can see in the code, the code is in uh, uh, 10 million. Uh, if you go to the repo, uh, there's a, a folder, uh, there's the Arduino code, there's the uh, CAM unit, which is for the uh, remote unit, and then there's the server. And the CAM unit is where uh, uh, the remote unit code is. So, can you just quickly show me? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Okay. David, does the Arduino have a GPS component that you can put on it? Um, you, yes, that's possible. Uh, I, I just don't have the budget to buy a GPS system. Yes. As I said, I was, I'm, I'm thinking in a bigger picture, so uh -huh. I'm looking at one of the major problems that we have, which is taxis, for example, right? When you need one, you don't get one because it's raining, right? Uh -huh. And everybody wants one. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, for example, all the taxis will be employed with a small chip that is delivering that information to whoever is going to distribute the data, right? Uh, you can predict, and that's what Uber does, right? They're predicting where, over time, most of the people will probably ask for a taxi, and they're just managing the demand and supply at the same time in the best possible way. Right? Yeah, that would be a good application to have this little microcomputer, right? Put it in, in a small socket and put it on the dashboard with a SIM card in there. Uh -huh. and everything happens magically, right? Yeah. You don't even have to charge the, the taxi driver for it, right? So the, let's say Comfort would be interested in, in better distributing their cars and getting them to drive around empty less, which is which is producing gasoline and, and all that stuff, that would be a good application, right? If, if that Arduino would be possible to do that. And the cost obviously has been low. And, and the other thing was this Rahi project or something like that that Roland presented a couple of months ago, I think last year, right, to, to look at local weather. Uh -huh. And then use that in the crowdsourcing in order to 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 come up with with uh, warnings maybe or, or other stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's definitely uh, uh, within the realm of possibilities. Just, uh, it's very exciting. So if anybody would be interested to you know uh, develop this even further, maybe it and fork it, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to collaborate. And you know, yeah. So definitely very exciting, just like what that gentleman said. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, so here's the uh, digest function. Okay, so I I have uh, two arrays, so two Arduinos and from Arduino. So these are. The arrays that I will uh, populate as and when uh, uh, your socket I/O message come in, so I just uh, push on to uh, two Arduinos when the socket come in. I push to two Arduinos, and uh, uh, when there's a, a sense sen of data from Arduino coming in, I just populate the from Arduino, and. Uh,
And sorry, it took me a while to find the code. Uh, yeah, so that's the digest function. Um, it's pretty simple. So uh, it just fires every uh, continuously every 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 uh, five hundred milliseconds. Do you have to query the Arduino for its current sensors, readings, or do they just arrive in events that you have no control over? Um, yeah, I have to query. Uh, uh, the Arduino won't um, send any unless uh, it receives a, a, a command over serial. In, in this case, I think uh, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, 0 for pen left, 1 for pen right, and 2 for uh, Sensor, yeah. So, so is it request response style? Uh, yeah, you can think of it that way. Do you, do you block between asking and receiving data? <laughs> um, it happens over uh, serial, so non serial port actually handles that. So, uh, so you, you can, we can do something like it, um, on data, then blah, blah, blah. Okay. And, so, yeah. why, what, since it's not. Uh, I guess the communication is happening in a separate thread. Why do you need a dynamic cycle from the server side messages? Why can't you just issue those immediately? Ah, okay. There's no single threaded, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, there's a, if I don't um, put them in the dynamic cycle, yeah. so, um, there's a possibility that when the Arduino is just sending the uh, as a, as a sensor data, right. uh, there's uh, something coming into the Arduino. Uh, the pen lab or pen right coming into the Arduino. But if so. you block while you're talking to the Arduino, then that event, the pen left, will just sit in JavaScript's event loop, right, until you're finished. Then you can handle it next. Uh -huh. Unless I'm mistaken. So. Yeah, I mean, there's more than one way to implement it, actually. Okay. This it just seems way. like. Because, I mean, the great thing about like JavaScript is the fact that you have this single threaded event loop style stuff. So it sounds great to use for I.O. And if you're blocking anyway, then there's no chance of sending a message at the same time. Right. Um, I, I guess so. <laughs> we can talk I, about it later. I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, this is what happens uh, in my mind as I uh, work on this. So. Yeah, so. yeah, it's about time to wrap up. OK, cool, cool. So yeah, um, uh, uh, just send me an email um, if you guys have any questions or want to develop more. Uh, KuraKuraDave at gmail.com, K-U-R-A-K-U-R-A-D-A-V-E at gmail.com. Thank you.